Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Little Rock, and now, Pastor Stewart. Welcome back to your Acts Ministry podcast. We're walking through the Bible, chapter by chapter. What an incredible study uh, to increase our knowledge of God's Word, because we know, we know that that Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And we're we're studying one of the most fascinating characters in the Bible that really portrays to us, that really teaches us about the sovereignty of God, how sovereign God is. Now, brothers and sisters, if you want to use this and we should use it like Paul tells us to use it because it was written for us to know that God is absolute sovereign. And when we make decisions or choices or things happen to us when that domino piece falls in our life and seem like everything is falling and you have no control over it understand that God is still in control so chapter 41 we're talking about we're talking about Joseph he has been sold into Egypt because his brothers they were angry with him jealous of him uh, and they wanted to kill him But at the point they were going to kill him, there were some Ishmaelites or Midianite traders coming by. So they sold Joseph into Egypt. He gets sold into Egypt and the Midianite traders sell him to Potiphar. And then Potiphar, what Potiphar does is he makes him rule over his house. But Potiphar's wife lies on Joseph and Joseph ends up in Egypt prison he in prison he meets the butler and the baker the butler joseph interprets a dream gives him great news and tells the butler don't forget me but guess what he forgot about it so here we are here we are chapter 41 it says and it came to pass at the end of two four years that pharaoh dreamed and behold, he stood by the river. So here, here we are. And this is this is very important, very important. And we can receive a great amount of strength from this when we understand the importance of it, that Pharaoh has a dream. Joseph is in the dungeon in prison. Pharaoh has restored the butler who once was in prison with Joseph. And in in Pharaoh's dream, all of the royal magicians, uh, all of his leaders, nobody could interpret the dream. It is at this point that the butler remembers Joseph. Finally, he he remembers him. And he remembers that there was a young Hebrew young man in prison that could interpret a dream. Think about that. It's a young man. So he tells Pharaoh. Pharaoh sends for Joseph. And this is this is this is very powerful. He sends for Joseph. Joseph is in the dungeon. We're gonna see what happens to Joseph the same day. I mean he's in the dungeon serving a life sentence, but something is going to happen. Pharaoh has a dream, nobody can interpret the dream. But they sent for Joseph, and Joseph was able to do what none of those that were uh, of the king's household, the Pharaoh household, could do. He was able to do it. So guess what? He starts off in the dungeon on the same, on this day, the same day he's elevated to prime minister. Now, nobody can do that but God. One day he's one at the beginning of the day, he's a criminal serving a life sentence. At the end of the day, he's the prime minister, second in charge, in the greatest nation on the planet at the time. I want you to think about that. The same day. Same day. From the dungeon, from prison to the palace, same day. From not having any authority, being an unknown. Now, that's what you got to understand. From being an unknown in prison, in the dungeon, 
being treated a certain way the same day they are crying out, bow the knee to Joseph. Wow. 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 If this wasn't the Bible, it'd be hard to believe that it would. It, it seems almost like a fairy tale. It doesn't seem real, but we know it's real because it speaks of the sovereignty and the power of God. This is very applicable to our lives. That's why that's why it is so important that we understand that every day he allows us to wake up every day we get up. It is the day that the Lord has made. What should we do? We should rejoice and be glad in it. And every day he gives us or loadeth us down with benefits. He say he load us down with benefits every day, every day. So in the day that he makes for us, in the day that he makes for us, that day that was made for us and we not for the day, then he, he load us down with benefits in that day, in that day. Are you listening to me? In that day, he load us down with benefits and he opened doors that no man can shut in that same day. Can you handle that? Can you handle from being in prison and being in the palace in the same day? Can you handle wearing uh, a number and an orange jumpsuit to being in royalty? Same day, same day. This is what happened to Joseph. It happened to Joseph. It happened to Joseph. And his story is just getting started. His story is just getting started. So the Bible, the Bible says, the Bible says after he does this and Pharaoh interpret Pharaoh dream. And, and then it was seven years of plenty, seven years of famine. Now, in the seven years of plenty, Joseph had a plan. He had a plan. He, he had devised a plan on what they needed to do so they could perform what they needed to perform so they could be. They could be what. God wanted them to be and in the path that God wanted them to walk in. Because the verse 57 in Genesis chapter 41, it says that all countries came into Egypt to Joseph to buy corn because that the famine was so great in all the land. Now, just just think about that. From prison to supervising. Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. Thanks for partnering with the Acts Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in xministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. That's Simple Give. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. The needs of all the countries in that area, they were coming to him. Pharaoh put him in charge. That's the God we serve. That's why we walk by faith and not by sight. If I could talk to Joseph early in that morning, he was in prison. It didn't look too good. Matter of fact, I, I bet it looked awful early that morning. It seemed like another day. Good God from glory. It seemed like another ordinary day, another day in the dungeon. He's going on and all of a sudden they come after him. To shave him, to bathe him. Because this is your palace day. You got to think about that. This is the palace day. This is the day that I take you to the palace. Wow. So brothers and sisters, don't don't ever don't ever underestimate what God can do in a day. Don't ever underestimate the power of God, what he can do in a day. In chapter 42, chapter 42, we we see Joseph during the famine, administrating all of those countries. He's not just the prime minister of Egypt. He's, he's the world administrator. 
He's he's helping countries stay alive, people stay alive. He is in a central position. He's been called and chosen to do what he's doing. My God, my God. But in chapter 42, Jacob says to his sons, 10 older sons, he says to them, there's corn in Egypt. Why do we, why do you look at one another? And I'm paraphrasing, since there is food in Egypt, we have money to buy the food. Why are you standing here looking at one another? Now, just think about that. These are 10 grown men. And he's saying, like, look, if you don't move, we're going to die. There's no need for us to die. Provision is already here. So he sent them down into Egypt to buy. Now, this is where the story really, really become interesting. And this is where we begin to see the how detailed God has made our future. Because when the 10 brothers, older brothers came to Egypt, they had to come before Joseph. And when they come before Joseph, the Bible said Joseph recognized them immediately. But they didn't recognize him because he's speaking to them through an interpreter. And when they thinking Joseph is dead. So they come and the Bible says immediately Joseph recognized who they are. And then he remembers the dream. Wow. Isn't that wonderful? He remembers the dream. What God had said. He sees it come to fruition. He sees the dream come to fruition. What God has spoken to him when he was 17. He's 30 now. He's 30. I'm sorry. He's, he's 37 now. It's been about 20 years. 20 years later, what God said, Joseph witnessed that dream. They come and they bow before him. That was the dream. That was the dream. Joseph recognized, wow, I saw this before. And it's at that point, it is at that point that he recognizes that. And, and Joseph began to put them to the test. And I have to say that. He began to put them to the test. What do you mean? He, he, he began to make stipulations. He, he accused them of being spies because he had to find out what was going on with his brother. Because his younger brother was there. His younger brother was Benjamin. They had the same mother. Now, if they had tried to kill Joseph and sold him into slavery, uh, I believe Joseph is thinking, I wonder what they're doing to my brother. So he began to act like they're spies, and, and he keeps one of the brothers. He keeps Simeon. He keeps Simeon. I think Simeon was like the ring leader of anything that that was out of order in the family. His his temper. You think about Simeon. You think about Levite. You think about those two, and you almost think about James and John. And so here he keeps Simeon, put him in. He puts him in prison, not really a prison. He puts him in a place so he have leverage so these brothers would bring back Benjamin. So they go and they stay home for a while. They stay until all the food is gone. And then Jacob, who was very protective of Benjamin because he had lost Joseph, and he makes mention of that, Finally, he had to yield and let them bring Benjamin or take Benjamin to Egypt. And when he does that, when he allows them to take Benjamin to Egypt, and there is an incredible story that's going to happen. It's going to happen. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get to that in our next, our next installment as we walk through uh, chapter by chapter so that is that is chapter 43 uh, dealing with Benjamin and what is going to happen as they bring Benjamin and the emotional roller coaster Joseph is experiencing and seeing after he recognizes what God has done what God said was going to happen and now to see 
the word of God being played out in his life is overwhelming for Joseph. All right, brothers and sisters, stay tuned. Our emphasis is to place the emphasis upon how this applies to me where I am in my day. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. Sunday School begins at 8.30 a.m. And for a powerful word, join us at 9.30 a.m. for our morning worship service. Bible study is each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501 501- Three two nine two zero five five. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank Stewart.